What's going on my friends? Welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan in case you're new here and today we're going to be discussing about SPACs. What is a SPAC? What's going on with this DWAC? A lot of people were asking me to make a video specifically about DWAC which is the Trump social media SPAC but I realized a lot of people have already made videos about that but not many people have made videos specifically about what these things are and what SPACs are so I decided that's what I'll make the topic of my video but of course if you want to know my opinion and what I think specifically about the DWAC let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make a little video on that specifically as well. So let's talk about what SPACs are, how they work, just in case maybe you're interested in investing in one or maybe you just wanna know how they work. So these SPACs have been around for quite a while, but they're starting to become more and more popular now these days specifically than before. Now I don't wanna go into detail about why they're becoming more popular now. I'll talk more about that at the end. So if you're interested in knowing all about that and why they're becoming more popular, be sure to stay until the end. But what I wanna do here is I wanna give you a few different kind of examples and breakdowns of how these work. So obviously I'm gonna give you guys like the technical breakdown that says how everything exactly goes in order but more than that I want to give like a scenario and an actual example of something that could happen or has happened to help give you guys a better idea of what exactly these SPACs are and how they work. By definition a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. Now all that really means is that the job is, of this thing is to go and buy another company. So let me break it down for you guys. It's an entity whose job is to collect money and then use that money to go and buy another company and basically take it public similar to an IPO. The idea here though is that you don't know what you're really investing in. You're investing in a person's ability to go and buy another company. You're not necessarily investing in a specific company and most of the time the investors don't even know what company that head or that manager is planning on investing in. They might have an idea, maybe like what industry it might be in, but they never really know exactly, which is why these things also get the name of a blank check company, if you might've heard that as well. And again, it's all just faith in the head honcho that he's gonna go out and get a really good company that's gonna make everyone a bunch of money here. So let's do a little role playing here. Let's do a little bit of a, a, a scenario, if you will. Pretend you have a friend named Jim. Jim goes out and basically says, hey guys, I'm gonna start this entity. He's gonna open up a bank account or an LLC or a corporation, whatever it is you wanna call it. Let's just call it an entity. He goes and starts this entity, which is a SPAC, and the purpose of this entity is to be able to have money in it, to be able to collect money from investors so that he can use this money to go out and buy a company. So he'll say, hey guys, look, I wanna buy this company. Come invest in me, trust me, I'll handle everything. Everything will be good. I can't tell you what company it is exactly, but just trust me on this. From here, once Jim has the money, he now has two years to make something happen. So he has two years to go out and negotiate a deal with a particular company that he had in mind and basically go and get approval from his SPAC investors. And if everything goes well, everybody approves, then he moves forward to make a deal and make that merger happen and basically takes this company now public on the stock market. So from a technical standpoint, let's just say looking at the stages here. Stage one is the forming of the SPAC and the IPO of it, for lack of a better word. Basically, the sponsor and the head, the manager of this SPAC sits down and figures out exactly how much he wants to sell or what terms he's gonna use, how many warrants are gonna come with it. And don't worry about the warrants, that's something that goes a little bit more in depth, but of course, I'd be happy to cover all that in a more detailed video. I just wanna give you guys like the general generic idea of how these things work. So step one, they form the, the SPAC, all the terms, and they give it to the public. Step two is now that they have the money, it's go time. Once the manager or head honcho of this thing has the money, he has two years to go out and make a deal happen. Now, why two years? This is mainly as a form of protection for the investors. That way, you know, someone doesn't go out there and get people's money and just sit with it for 10, 20 years or, you know, who knows what could happen. So that two years is put in as a safety feature for the investors. And basically, if this manager doesn't go out and make a deal happen and merge with another company and acquire them within two years, then they basically have to kind of like liquidate everything and give everyone their money back. This sounds good for the investors, but it could be a bad thing because of the fact that once those two years are up, if the manager and head honcho haven't found another company to buy, they're usually going to get a dud company anyways. What do I mean? I basically mean that these managers don't want to lose their bonuses. They get 20% of the company just for putting everything together. So 20% 
of a bad company is better for them than having to give all the money back. So that's why this could be a bad thing is although it's there to protect the investors so that no one's just sitting there with their money, it could also pressure the head honcho of this SPAC to go in and make a last minute decision or make a bad decision or maybe just make a decision based on the fact that he's out of time and wants to at least get paid himself, not really thinking of the investors and the fact that he's probably buying a dud company here that could end up leaving all the investors just holding a bag or with nothing. And now stage three, Stage three is basically the merge, where the action happens, where the SPAC now turns into this company because they bought it and it now goes public and that's their way of IPOing a company without having to go through all of the hoops of the generic IPO. But that's stage three is basically go time. They merge the company and that's where you can really start to analyze it from if it was a good deal or not. Now, a few things that I wanna to touch base on are I guess you can say the pros and cons of an actual traditional IPO versus going the route of a SPAC. So let's talk about more so rather than the pros and cons because I don't like to put a bias on certain things. I'll rather just talk about the differences and let you decide which thing is better or worse or which one has a pro or a con. The number one thing, I guess the number one difference between an IPO traditionally and a SPAC IPO is that there is a hefty fee because they have to go through a lot of like management banks and investment firms and things like that, which all have to take a fee. And there's a lot of fees that go with the traditional IPO route. So one of the differences is that with the SPAC, they don't have to pay all of those fees for going public and IPOing. They basically get to avoid all of those fees by going the SPAC route. One other idea to keep in mind here is that it's better for the owner or the head of the company to go the route of the SPAC, but of course this comes at a cost to the investor. Now what is that cost? Specifically what I'm talking about here is that while it does cost less for the owner or the company itself to go public through the SPAC route, the head of this SPAC basically gets 20% of that company just for putting the deal together, for doing everything. Which, you know, it makes sense. He deserves to have some kind of compensation, but this is the point being is that although it is better for the owner of the company and the head of the company to go the route of the SPAC, it does come at a cost to the investors and that cost basically starts with that 20%, which is called the 20% promote or 20% promote package that the head or sponsor or manager of this SPAC gets. Now, one rebuttal that these managers or heads of these SPACs have is that yes, they do get 20%, but the idea that they mention is that if they went the other route, which would have been the traditional IPO route, they would have had to have paid a fee. So their defense is that, you know, yeah, there's 20% that we take, but if we went the other route, there would have been a percentage either way. It just gets funneled in a different route. The idea here is that there's some dilution going on. Now, we never know exactly to what degree or to what number exactly there is, but it all starts with the 20% that goes to the promote or the 20% promote package, which is 20% of the company that basically goes to the head or the sponsor of the company. And it also goes into the fact that there's warrants and a few other things that were within the terms of this SPAC that all tie in and calculate to basically having a 30% dilution going on there. So the idea is for every $10 of cash that goes into this, really there's only $7 of cash and the other $3 is going to dilution and things like that. This almost guarantees a great deal for the founders, but not so much for the investors. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's a bad idea. There are scenarios where this works and when it's actually beneficial or necessary to go the SPAC route, I just wanted to highlight the idea that it almost guarantees a great deal for the founders, but not always for the investors, which is just something you should always keep in mind when dealing with these SPACs. Now to address why these SPACs are becoming more and more popular, it's mainly all because of the fact that the cost obviously is less, but also remember with the cost, it's not just the fees that go into it, but it's also the fact that if a company IPOs traditionally at $50, and the stock shoots up to 80, the company didn't get to benefit from that. And in a time where IPOs are usually shooting up way more from their original IPO price, since that seems to be a bit of the trend during this time, that's another reason why these heads are going towards the idea of a SPAC IPO rather than a traditional IPO. So it's mainly the cost, also the ease, 
also the time. Speed is another factor that goes into the differences and is actually one of the main differences here as well. The thing is with a traditional IPO, you could be waiting six months before you're on the market and ready to go. With a SPAC IPO, the wait time can be only around two months. So obviously time is money, but another thing to keep in mind is from maybe a marketing perspective. So imagine you're a used car salesman at a car dealership. It's a lot easier to catch that person and get them locked in to buy that car if they make the decision right then and there rather than if they leave and decide to think about it or shop around or this, that, and the other. So the same thing applies with stocks. When you want to IPO, that six months, a lot can happen in six months. People can lose interest, they can forget, which will then result in lower demand. With a SPAC, you don't really have to worry about people losing interest because there's less time. In six months of time, you can get people hyped up, this, that, and the other, but by the time it comes out in IPOs, that interest might not be there, which could then result in either a lower IPO price or just a lower reaction or a less desired outcome once you IPO. So going the SPAC route will allow people to kind of hit the market quicker and do everything that you would with the IPO, but doing that with a fraction of the time. Some stocks that were SPACs or IPO through the SPAC route that you might be familiar with are NKLA, Nikola, DraftKings, DKNG, and recently, Lucid Motors, LCID, which rooted from CCIV, which was the SPAC. So CCIV was the SPAC that basically acquired Lucid Motors. So CCIV was the symbol. Once the merger happened, it turned to LCID and it all moves forward from there as that company now. So hopefully this helped give you a better idea of what these SPACs are, how they work, just in case you're deciding on investing in them or maybe you just wanted to know how they work. And remember, of course, they're risky, but the good thing is it's not a secret. You know exactly ahead of time what they are and what you're getting into. And while they are risky, they could be potentially rewarding. Now, of course, I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm just a normal guy waving his hands around here, just talking about what I know. But I just wanted to share that idea with you guys and hopefully it helped clear up some confusion. Of course, if you guys have any more questions about this, you want me to do a more detailed version of this or any specific SPAC or stock you want me to go over, let me know in the comments, but we'll wrap it up here. Just be sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I just hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or the rest of your night. Just have a great rest of your life and I'll talk to you soon.